having a good time, are we? Oh, speak for yourself. Well, you might as well enjoy yourself, because it's going to take me a while to build this fire and dry these wet clothes. Oh, no, you don't. We're going back to town. Wet or not, I'm not going to spend another minute out here with you. And it serves you right for lying to me. Oh, I'll tell you something. I'm not going anywhere in these clothes because it's wet. I'm going to catch pneumonia. So if you plan on sticking around, why don't you just go down in the woods there, give me a hand, find some firewood, help build a fire. Of course, you can also always just stick around here and watch while I get naked as a jaybird. You wouldn't. Go ahead. Well, thank you, ma'am. I don't mind if I do. I was told he's been arrested. Well, not exactly arrested. He's in Lieutenant Bowman's office. The police wanted to question him. About what? What's he done? Now, don't jump to conclusions. We don't have all the facts yet. Can I see him? No. Uh, not right now. I'm sorry. I, I don't understand this. Could you please tell me what's going... There is going... nothing to worry about. I called my lawyer. He's on his way down here right now. A lawyer? What's Cagney being accused of? Well, he hasn't been accused of anything yet. But it appears that the payroll of one of my construction sites might have been stolen. How many times do we have to go through this? I've told you all that I know. You said you went to the bank this morning, mm -hmm. you signed for the payroll, and then what happened? I don't know! How many times do I have to tell you I don't know? Why don't you believe me? You're confused, I understand. Yeah. We all are, but we have to get to the bottom of this. There's a lot of money missing. You realize that, don't yeah, you? Yeah, $20,000 last count. And you are our only link to figuring out what happened to that money, Cagney, so we're going to keep going through this until you remember something. It's not a matter of not remembering. I don't know. I blacked out. Cagney, listen to me. We're from the same neighborhood, you and I. Hogan and I, we go... We go way back. Now, I am trying to help you... I want to believe your story, but frankly, something is missing. The pieces just don't fit. That's not my fault. I can't tell you what I don't know. <sighs> okay, okay. We'll start all over again from the top. Maybe you'll remember some detail, something insignificant that will help me to help you. You willing to do that for me? Mm -hmm. Okay. From the top, slowly. This guy, this Kendall security guard, stops me outside of Bigelow's last night, dressed as a Kendall security guard. He said his name was Sam Evans. And he tells me I'm supposed to go to the bank today to pick up the payroll. Well, look, you don't believe me. What? This is the truth. I'm telling you, I swear it. When a show is a big hit, the cost of sponsorship just goes up and up. Well, if I were you, I'd, I'd get on the bandwagon before the rates go up even higher. A wise decision, Mr. Knapp. Yes, uh, thank you so much. I will get back to you. What on earth is going on? Please, please, What is going on here? Do you work here? In a manner of speaking, what are you doing in this building? You are not supposed to be here. 
looking for Chase Kendall. Is he here? Can we see him? No, he isn't. And how did you get in here? We want to see him. We want it's tickets no. to his show. Then you come back on Friday. We distribute tickets then and only then one hour before the show. We can't wait. We might not be able to get tickets. Young lady, I really don't. Please, Pete, for heaven's sake. Oh, oh, get get in here. Get oh, these young ladies out of here and then let them out of here. Stop it. If I was only a few years younger, give you an order. Where do you want these? Right. I've got a dozen more, you know, right on the truck. Um, he'll tell you where to put them. Chase, uh, Chase, come with me, right there. Chase, no, 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 no. Girls, girls, please wait outside. Chase will be out in a minute. You have to wait outside. Not me, I'm not going. Me neither. Forget it, Buck. No yeah. way, Tootsie Roll. I expected success, but this, whew. I'm very glad you came by. I need this week's script, so I... Chase? Have you heard anything from Alec? Alec won't be coming back. That's what I came by to tell you. We finally got the word. I'm so sorry. I still can't believe it's true. But we know we won't be back now. Whenever you're ready to leave, Chase, I've cleared the building. But there's a mob outside waiting for you. Hang on for me, will you? I'll be just a second. I'm going to need your help getting out of here. You bet. Okay. How's your father taking? Well, as well as can be expected. You know how that is. I also came by to tell you that I'm not going to be doing the show. No, you can get someone else to run the show if you want to. I, I don't mind. I don't want to have anything to do with it, though. Look, Chase, I know you're at your worst right now. Losing your brother is a terrible thing to go through. And of course, we're all going to miss out. Mrs. Right Wyatt, now, but I've already made up my mind. Don't walk away from this, please. And, and forget any reasons that I might have for wanting you to stay on or, or those fans that you seem to have made for yourself overnight out there. I'm talking about you, please. It, grief is a problem best handled in stages, and I think working would be good for you. I right want now. to get out of here. Don't be angry with me. I'm trying to talk to you as a friend. You need something to keep you on an even keel right now. Your feelings need time, and sitting on a rock somewhere just thinking about them is not going to help you. It there is no way that I can fill Alex's shoes. There's no way that I want to. But no one is even suggesting that you try that. Besides, Chase, don't you realize your own shoes are more than big enough for me and for all those kids out there? This show was meant to be Alex, not mine. Yeah, I know that. I know, and I know how angry you are, and I don't blame you, but the show is a hit, and it needs you, and The show is over. Hey. Justine, you kidnapped Jonah. <laughs> Jonah, oh, no, sweetheart, you come to me. What did she do to you? Well, there's nothing like being appreciated. What on earth possessed you to do such a thing? It was the urge to help, I think it was. Mm-hmm, the urge to help. How did you get your hands on him in the first place? Well, I sort of bent over and picked him up. His Aunt Joe never showed. And before you get on my case again, I went over to Susie's this morning to tell her about Cagney. What about Cagney? Are you kidding me? The police are looking for him. Into my office. Uh, and bring Jonah's stroller with you. Please, come along, darling. Yeah. What a good boy it is. Uh, close the door. All right, now what are we talking about? How come I know all this and you don't? The guy in your newsroom told me. The 
Police apparently think he's involved in some sort of robbery. Well, I'm not surprised, and I hope I, they throw the book at him. And you decided to tell Susie? Well, I think she should know. Oh, I'm sure that's what you thought. <clears throat> and if he is in trouble, he needs someone. And what, may I ask, is wrong with you? You're looking at typhoid uh, Mary as far as Cagney yes, McCleary is concerned. Yes, right there. You know, I could just see me pleading with him through the bars to talk to me when Susie would float in, having found out anyway, and looking more like Snow White than she already does. That's assuming, of course, that he's caught. Well, oh. as soon as he finds out they're looking for him, he'll turn himself in. No, I really have underestimated you. <laughs> this way, when Susie shows up, Cagney has to ask how she found out so quickly, right? Why, Justine told me you were in trouble. And then, of course, he decides that he has completely misjudged you, and you must really care for him if you were willing to send Susie to him, Bravo. Thank you, thank you. Please, no applause, just throw money, as in the oft-mentioned raise we've spoken so much about. There is one little problem that I could see. Your plan could backfire entirely. For instance, what if Susie's heart melts when she finds Cagney in trouble and needing her? They could just kiss and make up, you know. Yeah, they could. But then, Susie does not strike me as the type to be comfortable in police stations. Could go either way. And I guess I will have to gamble. Losing in the short term could mean winning in the end. Good luck to you. Thanks. I won't refuse it. You really do care a great deal about him, don't you? Maybe one of these days he'll realize how much. You love him. Oh. Cute kid. <clears throat> yeah, I think so. Leave him here with me. I'll take care of him. <clears throat> How much longer can they keep us waiting? And why don't they just tell us what's going on? Well, I have to be in court in half an hour. I'd like to talk to Cagney before I leave. I'll give Bowman five more minutes, sir. Cagney has not come out by then, I'll go in. Well, it's about time you came out. What's been holding things up in there so long? It's quiet. Mr. Kendall, I have done everything I can to get Cagney I'd like to open to see up Mr. McCleary way. now. Who are you? He's my attorney, John Garvey. Attorney. I have not charged Cagney with anything. I am still trying to ascertain exactly what happened. May I please see Cagney? If you haven't charged him, why are you Would holding you him? Would you mind not telling me my job? You can go in and see him. Ask him to cooperate with me. I'm really trying to help him. Just tell the officer I said it was okay. Oh, well, Miss Wyatt, see if you can get him to calm down. All right? Thank you. I will. What have you been doing to him? Oh, give me a break. Oh, Lieutenant Bowman said it was all right. Very well. Susie, what are you doing here? I heard you were in trouble. Now, bad news travels fast in this town. Justine heard about it at Channel 6, and she came by to tell me. Dead battery, huh? You just told me that to keep me here all night. Did I? Yes, you did. Now, why would I want to go do a thing like that for? I don't know. You tell me. Especially since I know you have homicidal tendencies. What? Trying to drown a man just for having a good time with you. Yeah, well, I came up here for a good reason, not a good time. <laughs> Besides, you only fell in four feet of water. Well, you didn't know it was only four feet. I most certainly did. I've been here a hundred times with my grandfather. Oh, yeah? Well, he must have been doing the driving. Are you finished? Well, I stopped talking, didn't I? With the car. Oh, right! The car! The car! Mm. Maybe there's a little blue wire down there you can jiggle. <gasps> or a widget you could recommend we use. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, now, there's no way to get nasty, is there? Oh, come on, you're the one who said someone was watching us all night. Someone who followed me all the way up here. Uh, well, there was. And ten to one it was your cousin Corn. Check out those tire tracks. I did. And even I could see that that car came in, made a U-turn, and went right back out again. Well, that doesn't mean that whoever it was didn't stop the car, get out, and then turn around. You heard noises. 
Serve you right, and after you fixed my car, I made you hitchhike all the way back to town. Is that so? Ow! Oh! You hurt yourself? Oh, no, I always say ow when I'm having a good time. Besides, what makes you think I'm going to go back to town? See, to me, I remember being fired not too long ago. But then again, I'm working for Uncle Sam, so you can't exactly fire me, can you? So, I suggest we affect the truth. We do have a, a job we have to finish. That's right. Finish fixing the car, please. Now, we don't have a thing on your cousin yet. We could be barking up the wrong tree. Or swimming in the wrong pond. We got to come up with a strategy. We also have to come up with a running automobile. Now, we got to find a way to prove what it is we already suspect. And I've been thinking you're right. I think we ought to work together. We can come up with a plan. We'll be doing a whole lot better than we've been doing. Well, we're not going to do anything until you fix my car. Well, first I got to know. We got an agreement or not? Kentucky... Simple handshake will do. Yes, we have an agreement. Well, you will more see that we'll kiss with you. After you. Is it fixed? The car? Oh, yeah, it's been fixed for about an hour. I just need your undivided attention while I uh, what? made this agreement, partner. An hour? This car has been fixed now, 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 you mustn't you... hit a man in a weakened condition. I almost drowned before, remember? Let go. Did you say let's? Or let? You know, I've been thinking. We had a very good time fishing. I think it's time you reconsider for all of Oh, no, 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 that won't work either. Remember, you told me to lock the keys inside. May I get your keys for you, my dad? You have no hard evidence of any kind against Mr. McCleary, so there is no reason to detain him. Oh, I'll tell you what I have. I have a phone call at 10 o'clock this morning from one of your men telling me that Cagney has gone to the bank and withdrawn the payroll. And then I have a forged authorization, a fact which you confirm. Then I have a van and an empty valise used in what seems to be a robbery. And finally, I have Cagney sitting in my office, dazed and confused, acting like he doesn't know what hit him. And he's the only one who can tell us what happened. Sure sounds to me like you don't believe him. I'm not sure what I believe. But I know we won't find out anything if we let him walk. You can't keep him unless you charge him. And you know it. Oh, I wish guys like you would take one day out of your busy schedule and come down here and do my job. Then you'd all know what I know. You will, Bowman. I believe him. You want to see him get out of this scot-free? Yes. Then answer some questions for me. I know, I know. We've gone through it all before. Humor me. As long as you keep it brief. Cagney has picked up the payroll before, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll leave if you want me to. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I just want to figure out what's going on here. I want to understand what happened. I just hate the thought of you seeing me like this. Don't say that. They think I stole this money. I know. But you don't think I did. Of course I don't. Then you trust me. Why wouldn't I? That was different. Look, let's not talk about that right now. Let's just figure out how I can help you. You already are. You're here. Cagney? Yeah. You'll be pleased to hear that I believe you've told me everything you know. Then you're saying I can go, right? Lieutenant. What? This just came in. Thank you. Saying I can go, right? Cagney, this your signature? What is it? Please. Answer the question. Is this your signature? Yes, it is. So can... What is it? What does that mean? Lieutenant. You ran a check on the van used in the robbery. This is the rental agreement for that van. Cagney has just admitted that it's his signature that's on it. Cagney McCleary, I'm holding you in custody in suspicion of robbery. <laughs> I knew you'd be anxious to see him, so I brought you the rough photos. He's a cute little guy. 
Pick out the ones you'd like me to print and I'll blow them up any size you like. The clearies out of the way and you've got your stake. Now what's the next move? Mine. I'll handle it myself. <laughs> Thank you.